Imagine spending so many years of your life looking for rumored treasure and finally finding it. Such is the joy that has hit the Legina brothers as they have eventually found what they have been looking for in Oak Island. In their quest for the fabled treasure, Rick Legina, accompanied by Tom Nolan, another esteemed Oak Island landowner and their dedicated team, is gearing up for yet another thrilling excavation endeavor. Their sights are set on Lot 13, strategically positioned northeast of the swamp, where they harbor hopes of unearthing pivotal clues that could potentially unlock the mysteries of the island's enigmatic past. Eager anticipation courses through their veins as they prepare to delve into uncharted territory, fueled by the fervent desire to uncover long-hidden secrets. With a resolute determination to leave no stone unturned, they embrace the spirit of adventure, recognizing that now is the time for bold and decisive action. As they commence their excavation efforts, their senses are heightened, attuned to every subtle nuance of the landscape. A sense of intrigue envelops them as they encounter unexpected layers of clay, a curious anomaly in the natural terrain. It dawns on them that such a presence is highly irregular and warrants further investigation. Undeterred by the challenges that lie ahead, they press onward, driven by an insatiable thirst for discovery. And then, amidst the earth and rubble, a glimmer of hope emerges a tantalizing glimpse of something that holds the promise of unlocking the answers they have long sought. With hearts pounding and adrenaline coursing through their veins, they stand on the precipice of a momentous breakthrough, poised to unravel the secrets that have eluded them for so long. They noticed blue clay at that point and speculated on its significance, recalling instances where they had encountered a similar color during excavations, particularly when exploring a mysterious boulder formation known as the quadrilateral. Rick Legina and his team had just stumbled upon what they considered a potentially crucial clue, identifying it as the same type of clay found around the money pit during the initial excavation in 1804. They remembered that at a depth of 40 feet, searchers had uncovered a layer of blue clay, which served as a sealant to prevent water from entering the shaft. In their ongoing exploration of Oak Island's mysteries, the team stumbled upon a peculiar phenomenon known as the Eye of the Swamp in 2018 a circular arrangement of boulders harboring the same mysterious substance they had encountered before. Intrigued by this recurring presence, they couldn't help but marvel at its shallow depth, a perplexing anomaly that defied conventional expectations. As they scrutinized this enigmatic formation, a tantalizing possibility began to take shape in their minds, a tantalizing connection between this discovery and the legendary money pit. Engaged in a thought-provoking discussion with Terry and Mike, Rick articulated his insatiable thirst for knowledge, expressing a profound eagerness to delve deeper into the secrets that lay concealed beneath the island's surface. In response, Terry offered reassurance, promising to illuminate their path with insights that transcended mere speculation. With a cryptic allusion to parallels between their current findings and the storied history of the Money Pit, he hinted at a deeper significance that promised to shed new light on their quest for truth. The presence of blue clay is integral to the historical account of the Money Pit discovery. If one wanted to waterproof an underground structure, exploiting this knowledge would be advantageous. Rick Legina suggested that the presence of blue clay could indicate the presence of a buried structure. The team pondered what kind of structure it could be and whether it might hold valuable items. They were intrigued by the mystery and eager to continue excavating. However, they decided to call it a day and returned the following morning with geoscientist Dr. Ian Spooner to examine the quadrilateral feature. Dr. Spooner observed a layer of clay beneath the stones and expressed curiosity about their origins. He noted the thickness of the layer and remarked on its unusual presence in that environment. Dr. Spooner found it improbable that the clay had accumulated naturally given the geological context. The team discussed the various types of clays present and noted the different colors which could indicate exposure to burning or heat. They pointed out Brentwood clay mixed with burnt wood, emphasizing that these elements are incongruous. They concluded that the clay had been disturbed and was out of place, suggesting deliberate human activity. This led them to believe that something purposeful had occurred at the site. They acknowledged the complexity of the situation and speculated on the reasons behind it. They mentioned the arrangement of boulders, noting that it's more difficult to remove them from a hole than to place them there, highlighting the intentionality of the actions taken. The team speculated that the quadrilateral might have served as a type of safe 
designed to seal the top and prevent water from entering below. They emphasize the importance of boulders in this context, suggesting that they were crucial components of the safe. They expressed confidence in their belief that the quadrilateral was a human-made structure, as it would be illogical to place large boulders in a hole without purpose. They considered the possibility that further investigation of the site could enhance their understanding of past events. The team pondered the possibility of treasure being located at the bottom of the site and deemed it worthy of investigation. While exploring, they discovered a piece of metal, initially mistaken for a rock. Upon closer inspection, they identified it as a large iron staple, possibly hand-forged. They noted its aged appearance with visible striations resembling wood grain. Speculating on its purpose, they suggested it might have been used as a fastener, a common practice dating back to ancient times. They questioned whether this artifact could provide further evidence of the existence of a structure yet to be uncovered at the quadrilateral site. Considering the discovery of blue clay, the team speculated on the potential structure that could be present. They suggested that any structure predating the original discovery of the money pit could be significant. They reflected on the effort required to create the quadrilateral and found the presence of the so-called staple perplexing. They questioned its relevance to the overarching mystery, which remained to be determined. Despite the uncertainty, they were intrigued by the findings and looked forward to further analysis in the lab. They expressed gratitude to Carmen for taking the time to join them and acknowledged the uniqueness of the artifact. At the Oak Island Interpretive Center, Rick and Marty Legina, along with Craig Tester, archaeologist Emma Culligan, and blacksmithing expert Carmen Lake, convened to examine the large metal staple unearthed a day prior at the Great Quadrilateral Site. They discussed the significance of the geometric figure, noting it was the first of its kind found on the island and expressing uncertainty about its meaning. Carmen examined the staple, querying its depth of discovery and purpose. He determined that it was not an anchor staple, indicating it was likely used to change the direction of ropes or blocks. He explained that due to its design, it would easily pop out if pulled straight, suggesting it was used in a tree or large post to change direction rather than being driven into wood. This observation led them to conclude that the staple served to alter direction. Could this staple have been utilized to assist in positioning boulders? Boulders of the size described would indeed be suitable for such a purpose. Further examination reveals that the artifacts are quite ancient. Staples like these have been made since medieval times. Could Carmen Lake be correct in suggesting that this heavy staple was once part of a rope and pulley system centuries ago, possibly used in the construction of the massive quadrilateral feature. Before their meeting, Emma analyzed the artifact using an X-ray fluorescent spectrometer. This device utilizes gamma rays to assess the elemental composition and potential age of metal objects. The analysis revealed that the staple consists of 98% iron, with traces of silicon, aluminum, manganese, calcium, sulfur, and phosphorus. These elements suggest the type of furnace or technology used in its production. The team agrees with Carmen's assessment that the staple is older. Rick states that whatever occurred in the Great Quadrilateral could have taken place long ago and might be more plausible. The team departs with a promise to continue further investigation and research to know what exactly the staple was used for. However, further information comes to light that keeps everyone on edge as they realize that the treasure is closer than they thought. This time, Terry and his team are diligently working on drilling the new borehole DN11-5 in the Money Pit area. After each phase of progress, they gather soil samples and send them to the monitoring team in plastic bags. Charles Barkhouse and geologist Terry Matheson are responsible for examining the contents of these bags. They carefully open the bags and analyze the mud in hopes of finding valuable clues that could contribute to the ongoing discoveries on Oak Island. At a certain point, it becomes apparent that the drilling of the borehole has reached the anticipated treasure zone, lying between 80 and 120 feet deep. Geologist Dr. Ian Spooner joins the team to stay updated on the progress. Terry informs him that they have reached a depth of 7888 feet and are nearing their target. Suddenly, the drilling machine emits a squeak, prompting operator Tedford to express frustration. Despite this setback, they continue drilling, but Tedford is forced to retract the drill as it seems to have encountered an obstruction. The uncertainty of what lies beneath prompts Tedford to retract his drill and eagerly share his discovery with the team. 
despite the fact that they all witnessed it unfold. As everyone watches with anticipation, the drilling team lowers a rope to gauge the distance between the last open hole and the bottom of the void. They are astonished to find that it spans approximately a foot and a half. Tedford then informs Terry and the others of this significant revelation. He explains that just beyond the 90-foot mark, the drill encountered an empty space, indicating the presence of an open void below ground level. The team is filled with excitement as they contemplate the implications of this discovery. Finding a void in the area believed to be the treasure zone, or the baby blob, sparks hope that they may have finally unearthed the long-awaited treasure. Recognizing the magnitude of this news, Terry requests that 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 the drilling crew to halt their operations temporarily while they deliberate on the implications of their finding. Rick reflects on the recurring pattern of anticipation and hope that accompanies each discovery of a void as they always yearn for this time to be the breakthrough in their quest for the long-sought treasure. However, history has shown that their hopes have been dashed time and again. Is this instance any different? There's only one way to ascertain the truth. The team gathers around as the plastic sheet containing the core sample is brought forth, eagerly awaiting what it may reveal. Excitement fills the air as they observe a substantial chunk of mud at the core, intertwined with wood fragments. Terry carefully selects a piece of wood for further examination, which will be sent to the lab to determine if it contains any metal components. While awaiting the results, the team remains optimistic about the presence of a tunnel below. To confirm their suspicions, they decide to deploy a camera into the void. This will enable them to visually inspect the surrounding area and discern whether they have stumbled upon a tunnel or merely an underground air pocket. Despite Marty's skepticism regarding the existence of a tunnel, they proceed with the camera deployment, considering it a low-risk endeavor. Marty reflects on the excitement and uncertainty that precedes the camera's descent. Having witnessed numerous disappointments throughout their journey on Oak Island, he has learned not to prematurely celebrate potential discoveries. Rick and he have been immersed in the treasure hunt long before their television series began, experiencing firsthand the heartache of missed opportunities and the tantalizing proximity of success. In the past 24 hours, Emma meticulously dried the wooden sample and then subjected it to analysis with the X-ray fluorescence spectrometer, XRF, to identify its elemental composition. She clarifies that discovering several metals during the analysis is not unusual, as they are naturally occurring and expected. Among these metals were potassium and manganese. However, Emma's revelation leaves everyone elated when she discloses that, alongside the naturally occurring metals, she also detected a trace amount of gold within the sample. The team is incredulous at this unexpected discovery, prompting Emma to confirm her findings by conducting the test twice. Rick is particularly thrilled by this news, recognizing it as a significant milestone indicating that their efforts are leading them closer to finding answers. Emma further explains that the presence of gold on the wooden sample suggests deliberate introduction by someone, rather than it occurring naturally. As the team reflects on this discovery, Rick asserts that they now have compelling evidence, confirming the presence of gold hidden somewhere on the island. He recalls previous findings of gold traces in the water and now in the wood near the garden shaft area. Rick believes that the discovery of gold in the wooden sample could propel the team forward, instilling hope that their endeavors thus far have not been in vain. He suggests that these discoveries may be interconnected, leading them closer to the fabled treasure rumored to be buried deep within the property. Eager to share the news with Marty, Rick instructs Craig to call him. Marty is delighted upon hearing about the presence of gold elements in the wood humorously questioning why gold is being found everywhere except in his hands. Nonetheless, he acknowledges that this discovery signifies progress and urges the team to remain patient and diligent in their efforts, cautioning against false hope and emphasizing the importance of thorough sample analysis. The team concludes their meeting with renewed optimism, determined to continue their work and unravel the mysteries surrounding Oak Island's hidden treasure. So far, everything they have uncovered is taking them closer and closer to the elusive treasure. Now they have evidence that the wood samples collected in the area contain gold, and this is a step in the right direction. While progress is being made in the various lots on Oak Island, the Legina brothers and their team keep tabs on the garden shaft reconstruction. On a bright morning, Rick greeted Jack and commented on the entertaining nature of watching the hammer grab in action. Jack agreed and remarked on Dumas's swift progress 
seeing that everything was slowly coming together in the time frame allocated for the reconstruction. The two discussed the ongoing efforts on Oak Island, noting the heightened optimism surrounding the endeavor to solve the centuries-old treasure mystery. Rick inquired about the depth of the operation, and Jack provided an update, mentioning plans for further work. They also discussed various investigations happening across the island, but emphasized that the most promising operation was the reconstruction of the garden shaft by Dumas Contracting Limited in the Money Pit area. Based on several recent discoveries this year, the team has strong grounds to suspect that this decayed wooden structure, reaching 80 feet deep, may be linked to the original Money Pit. Wood samples from the shaft have not only been dated back to 1735, but water testing within it has also shown significant trace evidence of gold. Rick bravely ventured into the Money Pit, where the new vertical structure, painstakingly constructed by Dumas, descended to an impressive depth of about 80 feet upon completion. Not content with merely reaching this depth, they also engineered lateral tunnels and embarked on exploratory missions outside the shaft, all in a relentless quest to uncover the hidden treasures concealed within Oak Island's enigmatic depths. Fueled by boundless enthusiasm and fueled by the promise of untold riches, the team eagerly anticipates the prospect of discovering original artifacts all while deepening their comprehension of the Money Pit's mysteries. To ensure no detail escapes their scrutiny, the dedicated crew from Dumas meticulously monitored the excavation process using state-of-the-art high-definition cameras, leaving no stone unturned in their pursuit of the island's secrets. The utilization of Spectrum 120 provided enhanced insight into the underground activity, thanks to its visual enhancement features. Rick Legina, fueled by his belief in the presence of treasure, was deeply enthusiastic about exploring the Money Pit. Alongside Scott Barlow, he anticipated a long-awaited moment that they had envisioned since childhood. Venturing below ground for the first time in the Money Pit area, they brimmed with enthusiasm at the prospect of unraveling its mysteries. Eager to explore what lies beneath the surface, Rick and Scott were amazed by the well-preserved wood and the historical significance it revealed. They discussed the potential discovery of additional structures and chambers in the area, expressing their desire for further answers. Grateful for the opportunity to participate in this unique experience, they extended their thanks to the Duma team for making this happen. The brothers also came across several shipping logs that provided evidence of a visit by a fleet of French soldiers to Oak Island in 1746. These items are believed to have originated from the Duc d'Anville expedition, dispatched from France with the goal of recapturing Louisbourg. One of the most thrilling discoveries in the first season involved a copper coin of Spanish denomination 8, uncovered by Steve Zazalig using a metal detector on the show. It is speculated that the coin was transported to the island during the 17th century. Metal detecting led to the discovery of additional ancient coins during the second season of The Curse of Oak Island. Along the beach, Gary Drayton found two Britannia coins from the reign of King Charles II, concealed beneath a layer of pyrite and rocks one of which bore the year 1771 incised into its surface. In the episode titled The 90-Foot Stone, the crew examined one of the coins unearthed during that season and discovered what appeared to be a cross symbol on one side of the coin. This particular treasure recovered on Oak Island in 2022 or earlier brought the greatest amount of optimism to the searchers. It raises questions about whether it would have been acceptable for use in a financial institution and stands as one of the most significant archaeological discoveries made throughout the course of the show. Following their excursion with metal detectors to the beach, Drayton and Rick Legina stumbled upon a solid lead cross. Upon examination, experts concluded that the artifact likely dates back to the 13th century. In subsequent episodes, further research unveils a connection between Oak Island and the Knights Templar. Utilizing their metal detectors, they ventured to an unexplored part of the island in search of buried treasures, they discovered copper and a well-preserved cartwheel two pence after moving a large boulder and extracting it from underneath. Drayton pinpointed a signal with his metal detector, allowing Rick Legina to unearth a jeweled brooch. The gem was made of lead glass while gold was utilized for other components of the jewelry. Among the most intriguing artifacts unearthed from the crypt were coins dating back to the 16th century, gold links and a stone with inscriptions that have confounded treasure seekers and researchers for nearly two centuries. The narrative depicted in the film primarily revolves around the crew's second venture into salvaging a wrecked ship, which proved to be a pivotal moment in their quest for treasure. Following the successful acquisition of silver money from the wreckage, the crew embarked on a journey back to the Netherlands 
with a specific mission in mind to bolster an invasion effort that ultimately led to the downfall of King James II in 1688. This historical event marked a significant turning point, illustrating the tangible impact of their actions beyond the confines of Oak Island. Phipps and his crew embarked on their Oak Island expedition with a different aim compared to the salvagers. Rather than seeking immediate wealth, they sought to safeguard the treasure from potential threats. Their strategy involved burying the wealth underground in the money pit, believing it would be shielded from prying eyes and thieves. However, their plans faced unexpected challenges. As they dug deeper, they encountered an underground cavern, leading to its collapse. This event flooded the pit, making the treasure effectively unreachable. This catastrophic turn of events not only foiled their efforts but also transformed the site into a maze of submerged mysteries, enveloped in enigma and uncertainty. Subsequently, after concluding the operation at the Money Pit, Phipps and his team returned to England to inform the government about the predicament. Despite various unsuccessful attempts by secret engineering teams to recover the riches, by the 1750s, the British Crown fortified the island with mines, ambushes, shafts, and flood tunnels. Recent discoveries during the production of The Curse of Oak Island, such as an ancient pickaxe and carbon-dated wood pieces, lend credence to the theory that the treasure remains untouched. Additional findings include two human skeletons, carbon dating to the late 1600s to mid-1700s, and core samples indicating human activity between 1674 and 1700. The shocking revelation of gold in the money pit adds intrigue to the island's mystery. Despite the various objects unearthed in the Money Pit area, the Legina brothers and team did not anticipate what came next. It was a discovery that left them both terrified and excited at the prospect of finally putting an end to the 229-year-old mystery. Rick and Marty Legina arrive at the Money Pit area to assess the progress of the probe drilling operation within the garden shaft. They are informed that the drilling has reached a depth of 93 feet, approaching the point where they believe the tunnel might lead directly westward into the potential treasure zone. The burning questions on their minds are whether they can locate the structure, and if so, whether they can breach it to uncover its contents. Rick noted that it was the final day, with no doubts about it. He mentioned that Dumas needed to wrap things up, emphasizing they had only half a day left for active searching. Asking for an update, he observed someone binding something up, acknowledging that wood could cause that, Expressing his desire to pull the bits and see what lay beneath, he sought opinions from the others, to which they agreed it was a good idea. Rodney received the instructions to halt drilling immediately, with Roger instructed to pull the rods out, clean out the filings, ensure everything went into a bag, and see what they could find, urging him to stand by. Rick commented that Oak Island is notoriously reluctant to reveal its secrets, emphasizing the challenge of uncovering hidden truths. He expressed the importance of gathering all available information to understand the significance of the wood discovered at the base of the garden shaft. Rick eagerly anticipated hearing about any significant findings from Ronnie's exploration. Ronnie replied that they found nothing significant, just some small pieces. When asked about his confidence in hitting wood, Rodney said he was still pretty sure, about 99.9% .9 certain, that he hit wood on the north side. Despite not having a direct hit into the tunnel, he believed they might have come down beside it. Rick commented that Oak Island is notoriously reluctant to reveal its secrets, emphasizing the challenge of uncovering hidden truths. He expressed the importance of gathering all available information to understand the significance of the wood discovered at the base of the garden shaft. Rick eagerly anticipated hearing about any significant findings from Ronnie's exploration. Rick suggested that if they had indeed come down on the edge of the tunnel, they could use that information to project the line of the tunnel. He then proposed that he and Marty should explore the bottom of the shaft together to determine the location of the tunnel. Rick expressed a sense of anticipation, reflecting on how they would have never expected such a moment ten years ago. He acknowledged the significance of their journey and expressed excitement about exploring the money pit together. Finally, Rick likened the experience to a childhood fantasy, highlighting the unique and memorable nature of their exploration. Marty reflected on the significance of their journey, noting that he and Rick, 60 years later, were venturing deep underground in the Money Pit area, following in the footsteps of countless others who had sought the treasure over centuries. He expressed appreciation for the opportunity to share this experience with Rick, emphasizing their bond as brothers. Rick echoed Marty's sentiments, 
acknowledging the awe-inspiring nature of their exploration and the journey back in time it represented. Despite the constraints of time, they both expressed determination to continue their quest in the future. Marty recognized the significance of the lower points in the shaft, considering them potential locations for any items that might have fallen. He highlighted Gary's belief that objects tend to accumulate at the lowest point. Rick agreed with the idea of using a metal detector, suggesting that even if they were slightly above the target, it could still detect any items below. Marty also noted the advantage of the coil being waterproof, allowing them to submerge it partially in water at the edge of the shaft. They decided to proceed with this plan and contacted Gary to discuss it further. Scott called Roger and requested Gary's presence at their location, emphasizing the urgency due to the limited time remaining. Scott expressed excitement at the prospect of Gary using the metal detector, believing they could be nearing the actual treasure. Upon Gary's arrival, he expressed his enthusiasm, feeling privileged to be the first person to use the metal detector in the money pit. He conveyed his excitement about the setting, likening it to being in a medieval dungeon. Gary acknowledged the likelihood of encountering modern nails and wire, but assured Rick that he was equipped with a CX-3030 metal detector, which offers discrimination features suitable for their needs. Rick explained their dual objectives, searching for items dropped by previous workers at the base of the old shaft and investigating the possibility of being close to a significant discovery. Together, they moved a board around, uncovering a hole about two feet deep, sparking anticipation about potential finds. Gary's detection of a promising target further fueled their excitement, emphasizing the importance of identifying such signals. In the midst of the muddy soil and anticipation, Gary's detection of a non-ferrous target ignited a spark of excitement among the team. The mere possibility of uncovering treasures, gold, silver, or copper, hidden beneath Oak Island's surface, filled the air with an electric energy. Rick's voice rang out in praise of Gary's expertise, acknowledging the significance of the moment and the skill required to detect such elusive targets. Yet, amidst the thrill of the discovery, there lingered a bittersweet undercurrent of realization. Despite the tantalizing prospect of uncovering untold riches, the team faced a stark reality. Without the necessary permits from Dumas, their excavation efforts would be forced to come to an abrupt halt. The specter of bureaucratic red tape loomed large, casting a shadow over their hopes and dreams of delving deeper into the mysteries of Oak Island. Rick and Marty, ever the pragmatists, were acutely aware of the risks involved in proceeding without proper authorization. The safety of their team and the integrity of the project were paramount, outweighing any potential rewards that lay hidden beneath the earth. With heavy hearts, they made the difficult decision to prioritize caution over ambition, recognizing that the consequences of hasty action could be dire. And so, as the team reluctantly packed up their equipment and prepared to depart from the site, they did so with a sense of resignation tempered by resolve. Though the journey had been fraught with challenges and setbacks, their commitment to uncovering the truth remained unwavering. As they looked towards the future, they knew that the quest for answers would continue, fueled by a relentless pursuit of knowledge and a steadfast determination to unlock the secrets of Oak Island once and for all. The excitement peaks when Gary describes the non-ferrous find, igniting a sense of frustration due to the inability to pursue the target further at the end of the year. Despite the desire to continue, Rick acknowledges the constraints and calls for wrapping up the day's activities. The next morning in the final war room gathering, Rick expresses gratitude for the collective journey they've embarked on together, highlighting the remarkable shared experience they've all been part of over the decades. Rick pauses to reflect on the eclectic nature of their group, acknowledging the diverse skill sets, perspectives, understandings, and logical approaches that each member brings to the table. It's this diversity, he believes, that has enriched their exploration of the island's mysteries, offering a multifaceted lens through which to tackle the enigma of Oak Island. He takes a moment to hearken back to the journey's modest beginnings, reminiscing about the humble origins encapsulated in those initial five pages of discovery. Those pages, he notes, marked the inception of a journey that has spanned decades, a journey filled with twists, turns, and unexpected revelations. Yet despite the passage of time, the essence of their quest remains unchanged to unravel the secrets buried within Oak Island's depths. Moreover, Rick invites the group to consider the countless individuals who have preceded them in this quest, each leaving their mark on the island's storied history. From the earliest treasure hunters to the modern-day explorers, each has contributed to the ongoing saga of Oak Island. 
adding layers of intrigue and complexity to an already captivating narrative. As he gazes around at his fellow adventurers, Rick is struck by the magnitude of their collective endeavor. It's a realization that transcends individual contributions, reminding them all that they are part of something much greater than themselves. In that moment, he urges each person to pause and acknowledge their role in this epic tale, recognizing the significance of their shared journey. Rick's voice quivers slightly as he addresses the group, acknowledging his tendency to become emotional in moments like these. With genuine sincerity, he expresses his gratitude to each member, recognizing the collective effort that has brought them to this point. He emphasizes the remarkable nature of their journey together, highlighting the significance of having his brother, nephew, and others by his side throughout the adventure. Reflecting on the broader family involvement, Rick underscores the shared commitment that has driven their exploration of Oak Island. He credits the entire team, including Tom, for their dedication and contributions. Recognizing the pivotal role each person has played in their ongoing quest. Despite the challenges they've faced and the trials that lie ahead, Rick's tone remains one of optimism and appreciation. He acknowledges that while this chapter may be drawing to a close, their journey is far from over. With a sense of gratitude for the experiences they've shared and a sense of anticipation for what lies ahead, Rick concludes with a heartfelt reminder that their greatest discoveries may still lie ahead. After years of relentless pursuit and countless twists and turns, the Oak Island treasure hunt culminates in a moment of reflection and realization. The team led by Rick and Marty Legina, along with a dedicated group of experts and enthusiasts, stands on the precipice of discovery, their journey marked by perseverance, determination, and an unyielding spirit of exploration. As they gather in the war room, surrounded by maps, artifacts, and the echoes of centuries past, they can't help but marvel at the magnitude of what they've accomplished. What began as a quest fueled by curiosity and legend has evolved into a shared odyssey, binding them together with a common purpose, to unravel the mysteries hidden beneath Oak Island's enigmatic surface. Through setbacks and breakthroughs, setbacks and triumphs, they forged ahead, driven by a relentless pursuit of truth and fueled by the tantalizing promise of treasure. Along the way, they've unearthed ancient artifacts, deciphered cryptic clues, and navigated treacherous obstacles, each discovery bringing them one step closer to unraveling the island's secrets. But as they stand on the brink of their final chapter, they realize that the true treasure lies not in gold or jewels, but in the bonds they've formed, the knowledge they've gained, and the legacy they've created. Oak Island is more than just a place. Those who have followed the treasure hunt know that the island is a testament to the human spirit, a symbol of resilience, and a testament to the enduring power of curiosity and exploration. And so, as they prepare to embark on their final expedition, they do so with heads held high, hearts full of hope, and a deep sense of gratitude for the journey they've shared. Whether they find the fabled treasure or not, their legacy will endure. The team's determination is a testament to the enduring power of the human spirit and the relentless pursuit of adventure. That has been the video where the Legina brothers uncovered the treasure they have been looking for all these years. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel for such great content. See you in the next video.